I'm sorry, boy. This was the only motel room in town. You heard what the man said. Oh, honey, don't worry about it. I love it. Who is the decorator? Bonnie or Clyde? I'm sorry. Our reservations at the inn got screwed up. I told you, don't worry about it. Besides, we're only going to be here for two days. And most of the time we spent at the convention. What did you say this name of this place was? The John Smith Motel. Must have been named after all their customers. <laughs> you know, there is something about a cheap, sleazy motel that gives me crazy ideas. Why, Mrs. Smith, whatever do you mean? What, what? This is crazy. We are getting excited in a motel room, and we're married. Walter, don't mention marriage. You'll give this place a bad name. I'll fix us a drink. Get Sounds like a great idea. Did you ever figure out that this just might be a hoax? Did they put clean paper around dirty glasses? No. And another thing, they have one of those paper ribbons across the toilet seat. You know, when Carol was little, she used to think they would keep her from falling in. Oh, honey, let's forget the drinks. I'm not thirsty anymore. I'm hungry. Well, wait a second. Sorry, boy. I have to wait. We've got to get off to the kickoff banquet uh, to, at the convention. All right, but I'll tell you, chicken a king is a lousy substitute for Finley a king. Later. There is always later. You'll be too sleepy. No, I won't. I know you. After three or four drinks, you're always too sleepy. I can see it all now. We'll get back, and before I have a chance to say I love you, you'll be flat out on the bed, eyes closed, mouth open, making the little gurgling noises you always make. I gurgle when I sleep. And snort and whistle. You're a festival of weird noises. I won't be the problem tonight, Lloyd. I'll tell you what. I'll set the alarm clock for 12.30. And come hell or high water, we have a date. Okay, 12.30. Hmm, magnificent view of the rear end of the car. Walter, are you glad I came along? Of course I am. Why? Oh, nothing. It's just that this is the first convention we've ever been on together, and I had to ask you to bring me. Well, there's a reason for that, boy. Conventions are deadly dull. Not half as dull as staying home and rooting for some deranged housewife to win a jacuzzi whirlpool on The Price is Right. What are you talking about? You're the most active woman I know. You have your, your art classes, your community affairs, your charities. Busy work, Walter. Busy work. I wish I had something meaningful to Boy, do. Boy, please, not again. You will find something meaningful. When, Walter? When? I've been hunting for a job for months now. And it's always the same thing. Either I don't have enough experience or I'm too old. Oh, Walter, I need to be wanted. You're wanted, Maud. You're wanted. Of course I'm wanted by you, honey. But let's face it, I'm nothing but a sex kitten. Maud, come on. We've got to get over there. And you're never late? Only when I have to wait for you. Women are late. Men are not. You've heard the expression, wait till the cows get home. It's never, wait till the bulls get home. The bulls are already home, pacing back and forth, and looking at their watches. And who gets up to announce the crack of dawn? The rooster, not the hen. All right, if you want to lay the eggs, I'll get up at the crack of dawn, the cock a doodle do. Can I get in there? Be my guest. Say, honey, this bed is equipped with magic fingers. Magic fingers? What's that? Oh, that's one of those crazy devices that makes the bed vibrate. Come on, 
know, they really don't have much time. I'll be right with you. You know, you probably should have stayed at home. Doing what, Walter? Doing what? Sweeping the floors, making Boy. the bed, cooking Boy. the meals? Is that all women are good for? Cheap labor, feast the burden? If that's your idea of fulfilled life, Walter, you give them a sack of oats and then you kick them in the fetlocks. You'll be kind enough to point out your fetlocks. I will be more than happy to accommodate you. Walter, I'm tired of being a second-class citizen simply because I'm a woman. Oh, my boy. <coughs> you know I do not treat women like second-class citizens. You do. I do not, Maud. What is it that you want out of life? Walter, I want what every woman wants. I want respect. I want to be respected for the person I am. Maud, I respect you for the person you are. Do you? Who am I? Right now? Joan Crawford, and I'll cry tomorrow. That was Susan Hayward. Maud. Walter, you say you respect me for the person I am, but who am I? Now, Maud, I know it's a dirty word, but you are my wife. Fine. I was also Albert's wife and Barney's wife, and then what's his name's wife? I want my own identity. You want your own identity? I will give you your own identity, Maud. Here it is, your button for the convention. Hello, my name is Mrs. Walter Finley. Mrs. Walter Finley. Walter? Walter, why doesn't your button say hello? I'm Mr. Roy Finley. Because that's not who I am. And this isn't who I am either. Well, now no one knows who you are. But then it's unanimous. Hey, are you guys like down in there? <sighs> Look, Maud. I think women totally equal to men. Let, let's clear the air. I think women are equal to men. I think they should be given equal opportunities to be productive. <laughs> Don't they let you hop out from the store every Christmas? Oh, sure, and I appreciate it. But what kind of job is that for a college graduate? Standing around, keeping an eye out for shoplifters, wearing a Santa Claus suit. You wanted to be productive, and you were. You, last year, you caught the woman with the portable transistor clock radio in her brazier. Walter, anybody could have caught her cleavage was ticking. Walter, I have a degree in romance languages. I'm overeducated and underused. And wait, now will you please hurry up and put on your dress? Don't worry, I won't make you late for your convention. There you go again. What do you mean, my convention? Well, you're the appliance dealer in the family. Yes, and you're my wife. And that's all I am, isn't it? Your wife. All right. You're not my wife. Thank you. Maud, if you're not my wife, who are you? Oh, Walter, I wish I knew. I wish I knew a lot of things. I don't even know what I'm doing here. You asked me. You're the one who asked me to come along. Only because you wouldn't ask me. I thought you'd hate it. How do you know? I've never been on one before. Well? How do you like it so far? I hate it! Uh, look, Maud, you have your work and I have mine. We are partners in business and life and everything. I go to I go to the store, you stay home and keep the house. Yes, well, but you get paid for what you do. I don't get a dime. And that's the barometer, money. You know you're being productive when somebody pays you to do something. Well, all right. I'll give you five dollars to go and put on your dress. God, I'll get you for that, Walter. Look, Maud, I am sick and tired of emancipated women. Which is pretty strange, especially since I'm helping create them. Me, I'm an appliance dealer. I sell appliances. I make it easier for women to get out of the kitchen. And when they get out of the kitchen, what do they do? They walk into the living room where the men are and complain that they haven't anything to do and their time is unfulfilled. And on top of that, business is lousy. Now you listen to me, Walter. Not another word. Son? Hello, my name is Mrs. Walter Finley. Hello, my name is Mrs. Walter Finley. Hello, my name is Mrs. Walter Finley. Hello.
10 dealer award, second runner up, big man. What are you doing? Thought you weren't talking to me. I'm not, what are you doing? Fixing the shades so that no one can look in. Well, you might as well not fix them because there isn't gonna be anything to see.
Oh, darn it, I read it. Walter, can't we talk? On one condition. No more talk about your unfulfilled wife. Well, then there's nothing to talk about, because whatever I want to talk about, you don't want to talk about. Maud, do you love me? What is this? Spend it on the roof. Maud, do you love me? Of course I love you. Good. When two people love each other, they should have to talk. Good night. Why not? Just because you say so, it's not time to talk? Just because you're the man and I'm the woman? John, I love you are the woman. If you were a man, now I'd punch you in the nose. Why don't you? Go ahead. What? Go ahead. I told you. If you said you're not prejudiced against women, then punch me in the nose. Well, that's ridiculous. Go I'm, ahead. All right, I I'm told not you. Walter, go ahead. Okay, Maud. Maud. 1230. Look. We have a date. I remember it. I'm standing here. Watch. Boy, I love you. If you really love me, you would have punched me in the nose. Boy, I love you. Look, let's go to sleep. Still mussing up the sheets, boy. Afraid of what the maid might say tomorrow morning? Sorry about tonight. Guess if, if I were a woman, I'd, I'd feel the same way. I'm sorry I let out my frustrations on you. You see how it is, the disgust we argue, but yet we always end up like this. I told you, this is my role, sex kitten. Oh, Maud, you're starting again. Hello? Honey, what do they want? It's the motel manager. He, he wants to come up and take our picture. Take our picture? Why? Well, he just found out we're really married. 